Assalamualaikum. Resuming our videos on the lower limb. Today's specimen will be the knee joint. In front of you, this thing you see here is the right knee joint. Now the way I determined this was simply by looking the top side and the bottom side. Here I see one large transfer section of the bone. This is the femur bone. So this means that this is actually the proximal side. And looking at the bottom, here I see two transfer sections of the bone. The larger one has to be the tibia, while the smaller one is the fibula. And seeing as the fibula is located lateral to the tibia, this is oriented as the right knee joint. Now let's see what's on the anterior surface. The most prominent thing visible here is this patella prominence. You can even see how a tendinous ligament is going right above this and inserting right over here in the tibial tuberosity. This is the common tendinous insertion of the quadriceps femoris. The quadriceps femoris is actually a group of four muscles coming from the thigh region and all of them form this tendon which envelops the patella and from there on it then inserts downwards. If I were to dissect this further, there will be also other structures behind it, like the prepatellar bursa, superpatellar bursas, they would be pretty minute and maybe not even visible in these specimens, but they are deep, so we can leave them for now. You can actually see some of those four muscles of the quadriceps femoris. On the top left and top right side, if I were to show it like this, you can see the edges of those muscles. The one laterally is the vastus lateralis and it's positioned right over here while the one on the medial side that is the vastus medialis let's put this pin on this the center fibers that actually keep in mind at this point it's usually the rectus femoris the most superficial one which is at this point the vastus intermedius is more up above and deeper so on the center we can add a point for the rectus femoris. So three of the four muscles are seen here and they're forming the ligament which covers the patella. What else can we see on the anterior surface? Um, here we can see the condyles, the prominence of the condyles of the tibia. On this side, it's very difficult actually, but when I palpate it, I can feel the head of the fibula. Aside from this, if I were to rotate it slightly to the back side, we can see a very thick ligamentous type of sheet coming on the lateral side. This was the basically iliotibial tract. It was originating from the ilia and descends downwards to attach to the lateral aspect of the knee. These are some of the fibers of the iliotibial tract. Here, let's pass a black pin through this, just to show you this thick sheet light covering the lateral aspect. Rotating it even further back, here I can see the hamstring muscles. Now here you can see a very thick cord-like tendon and below it a flesh belly-like muscle. The one on top is the semitendinosus, while the one above is semimembranosus or semitendinous and semimembranosus. These two muscles over here let's use a green pen to mark them, are located on the medial aspect, semitendinosus and the semimembranosus below. Also remember that the semitendinosus forms part of the pes acernus, the three muscle which insert on the medial aspect of the tibia. With it, you have also the gracilis and the sartorius. You won't be able to see those two. Ah, here we go. Yes, excellent. Look at this. Can you see how I have three tendons going on the medial aspect of the tibia to insert here. This is your goose feet, the pes acerinus. This is the semitendinosus. The thin one is the gracilis. And here we have the sartorius, all three of these muscles. On the lateral aspect, we have the insertion of the biceps femoris. 
a two-headed part of the biceps femoris. And remember, this is different from the biceps brachii, which is on the upper limb. This one is the biceps of the lower limb, located as on the back side of the thigh, the hamstring muscle. And if I were to split it open, then you can see on the inside, major vessels, neurovascular bundle here. This over here, this collapsed structure, patent and quite large, is the popliteal vein. So let's pass a blue pin through this one. This is the popliteal vein. I don't want to damage this, it's a really excellent specimen. Here we go. The thick muscular one, you can see the lumen over here. This is your popliteal artery. So let's pass a red pin through this one. Here we go. And right beside this, obviously, there's only one major nerve coming alongside, which divides into two. This is your, well, the distal part of the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve will ultimately divide into tibial and peroneal. We'll see them on the below, but let's mark this sciatic nerve right over here. Remember, this is the distal part. Up above, it becomes, it's really thick. So we have the popliteal artery, the popliteal vein, the sciatic nerve, located in the popliteal fossa. This is your popliteal fossa. Now, if you remember last time when we did the cubital fossa, that was up in the uh, upper limb on the elbow joint. So behind the knee joint, we have the popliteal fossa. So we have this neurovascular structure. Going below, the first two muscles you see here, forming a bit of a curtain on the lower leg. These two muscles are your gastrocnemius, the right and the left gastrocnemius. Sometimes the heads of the gastrocnemius are absent in a certain group of people. And as I separate them, you can see how the sciatic nerve is then divided into multiple branches. Some of these branches are forming your sural nerve. The other one, tibial nerve, continues down below on the posterior aspect. This is your tibial nerve continuing down below. The common peroneal nerve is right over here. And here's the thing, if you see over here, notice how it is quite adjacent to the head of the fibula. Common peroneal nerve actually wounds around the head of the fibula. Over here it's entering deep, it wounds around the head and then it descends downwards, dividing into a superficial one and a deep one. The proximal part is common peroneal and I believe this is the actually superficial one as we are going further down. Deep one obviously on the inside. This muscle right over here, forming the floor, <coughs> this is the soleus, also considered as the peripheral heart of the lower limb, because when we're walking it contracts and it pushes all the blood in the deep, uh, deep, uh, deep uh, veins of the leg, causing the circulation to increase here. And a small muscle sandwiched between the gastrocnemius and the soleus, this is the uh, plantaris muscle. You can see, appreciate its thin belly and thin cord like. Remember, if I were to, the popliteus muscle is different. That one is located near the floor of the popliteal fossa, so you won't be able to see it very easily here. Gastrocnemius, soleus, and the plantaris. So we have done the popliteal fossa on the back side as well. Um, just one more thing to mention here. You can see how below the soleus you have all these deep veins of the leg. These are the sites where you have uh, a possible uh, door, deep venous thrombosis, DVTs. You can also see a few arteries right alongside. Remember, the arteries are thick-walled, smaller, while the veins are much larger. So you can see all of this vascular bundle in between. And another thing to note is, huh, if you see over here, right next to the tibia, this muscle coming from the front, if you didn't cover this one, this was the tibialis anterior muscle. As we go on below, you'll also see other muscles such as the extensor digitorum and the other ones, but they're more distally located. The peroneus muscles are right beside it. If you go right beside the tibialis anterior, right over here near the fibula, see a bit of the peroneus longus here as well. And with that, we have covered the knee joint and the popliteal fossa and all the muscles surrounding it. Thank you so much for joining us and Allah Hafiz.